Hey, everybody, welcome to week number five of Lit 2000. Um, we're going to take a look, as usual, at what's going on this week and where we're headed. Um, your only assignment last week, <clears throat> excuse me, was the poetry test. And um, I'm going to be taking a look at those here early in the week and giving you any needed feedback. So this week, of course, we're going into the poetry paper which is a little bit more high stakes, I think, for most people, but I promise you it's going to be fine. All right, so let me go ahead and let's look at the syllabus first um, just to you know make sure we're oriented in time. This is the last week of the poetry unit. Um, some of you will be excited to say goodbye to poetry uh, because it's not your favorite thing, um, but but we're going to be getting into the short fiction unit as you finish up your papers. So um, we're going to be looking at short stories for the next few weeks uh, before we take a look at longer works in the novel. I do want to point out that starting in week eight, we are going to be doing novels. And of course, those are going to take longer to read for you. So you may want to take a look now. I'll show you where to find those. And so if you want to be thinking about what um, what you want to do for that. But um, our readings delve into um, short fiction. But the only assignment that you have due this week is the poetry paper. So let's go ahead and go to the module. And we'll turn on the student view so it looks familiar. All right, so we are done with week four. In week five, our overview and objectives. Um, of course, we are finishing the poetry paper, beginning the readings for the, for the short fiction unit. So your objectives are a little bit double here. Um, you're gonna write the analytical research paper on a poem or poems assigned for the course. And then you're going to get into terminology and, and stories um, in terms of you know, how to navigate through short fiction. So in our learning materials and activities, of course, you have um, a list of items to read and explore, including the this handout on reading and responding to fiction. Um, that's something that I've written. That's a, a handout that'll kind of help you navigate and get into some of the terminology. And then in the LibGuide, of course, you have several stories and the accompanying materials to read including the story of an hour, a and Cat in the Rain, and a very old man with enormous wings. So let's take a quick look at those. As I did before with the poetry, these are not necessarily in any order coherently, other than um, it just is, it is what it is. Um, but so you will look for the ones that are, um, that are listed. So if we look at the account, you notice story of an hour is the very first one. We are going to be taking a look at A&P, which is a little bit further down on the list. Then Cat in the Rain, which is further down on the list. These are not in the same way, sorry, that uh, the poetry unit is. And then um, A Very Old Man with Enormous Wings, which is back up towards the top. So all the short fiction is all really on one page and you can go directly to the one you need. Let me go to the furthest one down. So let's click on the cat in the rain. It will take us directly to that box, but all we had to do was scroll back up. So it's really, it's all on the same, it's all on the same page. You have the story here. And of course you have a citation right here with the, the little three dots with the, the site. You have an author biography of Ernest Hemingway, which you may or may not end up using down the road if you write about this story. And then of course, you've got links to critical analyses. These are going to become most of the time your cited sources if you end up writing about this particular short story. And just like usual, the, are the awesome people in the library have gathered all of those things. In the story of an hour version, um, we even have a video source, which is kind of cool. So some of them have video sources, some of them don't, but all of these are things that you might use in a paper um, or in a discussion board down the road. 
you don't have any writing assignments this week on the short fiction, but that's where it is. While we're on this page, if you look directly below the short story list, you will find the novels. Now, you do need to pick a novel from this list. Um, you don't have to read it electronically. If you wanted to buy a copy of the novel so that you have a physical copy, um, you can get that from anywhere. Uh, typically, of course, Amazon has books cheap. Um, so I know that uh, especially if I'm going to write about it, I like to have the paper. I like to have the book on paper and not just electronically. Um, but these are the novels that you can choose from Kate Chopin's The Awakening, Mark Twain, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Zora Neale Hurston, Their Eyes Are Watching God, um, Jane Austen, Emma, F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby, Margaret Atwood, A Handmaid's Tale, and Nathaniel Hawthorne, The Scarlet Letter. Another good option if you want a print copy of this, these, the book that you're going to read, um, but you don't want to purchase anything, is the local library or the school library. But most local libraries are going to have those. So if you are a library member um, in your community, that's always a good option as well. Um, although I would not write in library books. I like to buy the book so that I can make notes in the margin and things like that. You don't have to do that at all, though. All of these are available in full text form um, on the LibGuide. So whatever you whatever you end up doing. But I have given you some heads up about that so that you can um, take your time reading the novel. It's not you don't have to have it read until basically spring break, but it'll be here before we know it. All right. So on um, the list of items to respond, I have asked you to, even though it's not required, use that Q&A discussion board to post any thoughts and questions about the stories that you've, you're reading or the authors that you're reading. And feel free to weigh in on your fellow students. Um, this may or may not result in Q in in extra bonus points. I don't know. I, this is an experiment. I have not asked people to do this without giving them a score for it yet. So we'll 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 see how it works. Um, under videos and visuals, you have uh, three, four, three, um, two that were not created by me, and one that was. about the arc of a story. Um, actually, that's not a video. Oh, that's the video lecture for, by me. This is, I, I was like, I'm staring at it going, that's not a video, that's just a photo. Um, this is a uh, handy dandy graphic uh, that gives you a quick picture of the arc of a story. And then there is another infographic about the various um, formal elements of fiction. So between the three videos and the infographics, you will learn a lot about uh, terminology this week. Support for the graded work this week. Um, don't forget that the poetry paper is due. Uh, in week four and the walkthroughs in the announcements, there's detailed discussions about that. And of course, you can reach out to me for help, as well as our library or our learning center. And of course, both of those can be accessed using the library's homepage. So those are your um, those are your learning materials for this week. And then, of course, you will get to the graded assignment if you click the next button or we can go back to the module page and get it. But this is going to be the link to uh, submitting the poetry paper. You can choose any one or two. You shouldn't do more than two poems. If there's two poems that you'd like to compare and contrast, that's fine. But most of the time you would want to stick to a single poem. Um, the requirements, of course, are that it be an MLA styled paper, both for the format and the documentation. You are going to perform a detailed analysis and explication of the poem, which essentially means that in addition to writing about it, you'll end up quoting the entire poem or poems. Um, you need to have at least two academic sources uh, for secondary research. And of course, you are more than welcome to use the ones that are provided 
in the LibGuide. You don't have to do a lot of extra research. You certainly can. Your paper should be at least four pages. And that means, and we've talked about this, I've talked about this separately with some folks. Um, first page of an MLA paper has all that stuff at the top. So your paper itself would need to go on to page four, set plain double space, and then the work cited will be on six or higher. You may find that this paper is automatically a lot longer because you're including set pieces from the poem, if not the whole poem completely. Um, when writing a poetry explication, unless you choose a po poem that's very long, and this is kind of goes into that, you will likely end up quoting the entire poem. You can choose how to do this so that it makes the most sense to you. It can be broken into stanzas. If it if the poem is broken into stanzas, then it makes sense to quote a stanza and then discuss it and kind of go back and forth. But some poems, of course, are all just one piece. And so I usually would put the introduction, quote the whole poem, and then um, and then write about it. What you write about the poem should be four pages. Um, so that, like I said, this paper might be much longer. Um, note about citing poetry. When you cite a poem, what goes inside the parenthetical citation, in addition to the author, if needed, is line numbers instead of page numbers. So you definitely need to utilize the line numbers uh, as you are quoting lines or even phrases or words from the poems. Poetry aspects include speaker, audience, form, and freedom from form, rhyme or lack of rhyme, rhythm or lack of regular rhythm, diction, theme, and figurative language. And then of course, you are also always welcome to interpret the poem through one of the theoretical or critical lenses that we've looked at, um, including the just kind of formal biographical historical aspects. Um, remember that if the poem was written before the year 1900, it probably is not the speaker and the poem or poet are not the same person, um, at least not identical. Um, we still, we have psychological criticism, mythological, sociological, and cultural gender, sexuality, reader response, and deconstruction. Um, some of the times when you are looking at sources, you may find them already using one of those critical lenses. And so that will kind of send you in that direction. Um, there's a detailed video about the paper in last unit uh, or last week. So make sure that you check that out and um, that will help you as well. You have the rubric here as usual um, and you really are uh, ready to go. You guys have been working on poetry for a few weeks. So I have every confidence that it's gonna be awesome. Uh, but again, reach out if you, have, if you have questions or problems. I will touch base with you probably in the middle of the week, but um, I will see you next Monday for sure and um, be on the lookout for those grades for the, the poetry tests. Um, usually on tests, there's not much feedback to give, but, you know, take a look at the questions, make sure uh, you see what you got right and got wrong and, and uh, any comments that I left uh, to help you. All right. So everybody take care and have a great week. Number five.